Recently, I was watching a interview on the Joe Rogan show with Carl Tuckerson, and they were discussing the world of the supernatural. And it was very interesting. I mean, here's what we do know is that there's enough going on in the skies, but not just the skies underwater, that the US military has been forced to respond to it. So like move aircraft from one place to another because there are too many of these objects in the sky. So it's real. The government is not controlling it. In fact, it's forcing the government DOD to respond and we know that there is a real effort and has been underway for a long time to to keep the public from knowing about it but that's all known that's established i don't think any rational person would deny that the question is like what is it how much of it do you think is ours well none of it's ours in general no they can't control these objects no it's not american technology or russian or chinese it predates all of that when we look at surveys surveys and polls indicate that a significant portion of americans believe in the existence existence of extraterrestrial life. For instance, in 2021, you have a Pew Research Center survey found that about 65% of Americans think there is intelligent life on other planets. And additionally, there was another poll in 2020 by the IPSOS poll revealed that around 45% of Americans believe UFOs are real and have visited the Earth. Now, in this interview, Carl Tuckerson is letting Joe know that this is a big hoax, that they're actually on this planet and they're not from outer space. Base. These are spiritual phenomena. There's no evidence they're from another planet. I mean, I think that's the op, that's the lie, that they're from Mars. Look, space, the atmosphere is really well monitored, right? Both for military, for defense reasons, but also because like, it would be nice to know when asteroids are coming. And there's no evidence, has never been any evidence that there are lots of these objects, these vehicles coming into our atmosphere from somewhere else, some other planet. There's no evidence of that at all. So they're from here and they've been here for thousands of years, whatever they are, and it's pretty clear to me that they're spiritual entities, whatever that means, they're supernatural. Supernatural means above the natural, above the observable nature, and they don't behave according to the laws of science as measured by people, you know, and they've been here for a long time. And there's a ton of evidence they're under the ocean and under the ground. They're beyond nature as we understand it. I mean, obviously they are. I mean, just chart their physical behavior. It goes outside of what we understand about physics. No visible means of propulsion coming at indescribable speed, hitting the ocean, continuing at speeds that are impossible under sea. I mean, in other words, if I take a nine millimeter router, 762 by 39 and shoot you at 50 yards underwater in a swimming pool, and it's even more intense in salt water because it's denser, you could catch the bullet if it even makes it to you, right? So if you have a craft underwater that's traveling at 500 knots as measured by sonar, right there, you're challenging our understanding of physics. Like, what is that? How can that be? They've tracked that? They've tracked things going 500 knots under the sea? Yeah, much much faster than any object could can actually go under sea. Yo, for sure. There's a a lot of stuff going on underwater and a lot and there's video of these things coming out of the sky into the water and also emerging from the water right yeah you saying they're above the ocean under the first ground? of all i you know i really wish this guy comes across the islamic view on this subject i tell you this guy the chances if he reads this to become a muslim are really high one of the things they said was that he's saying that there is this is a lie that they're coming from mars no. and other places no, they are with us. okay so this is a you're a check right there. You're saying that, okay, so this confirms Islamically that the jinn are here on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created three races, angels, jinn, and Adam, the human. Angels were created out of light. That's in a hadith. The jinn were created out of lameless fire, and we are created out of clay, earth, water, all of that. Jinn were created before the human. So, you were just saying that they've been here for thousands of years. Yeah. So they were, another confirmation. They were here before us. They existed before us. But when they existed on earth before the human, but you see, they have a shared element with the human that they have the freedom to choose, that they actually could choose to be Muslims and to be Kafirs, to be righteous and to be themselves. They said in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ Some of us are righteous and some of us are not. There is a narration, an authentic narration by Abdullah ibn Umar that they existed on earth 2000 years, which is two days before Allah created Adam. Here is the interesting peace they were all wicked almost the only one that really achieved righteousness and piety from his race was satan iblis which they call in english lucifer and this is 
why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upgraded him, elevated him. He said, because you chose with your own free will to be righteous and pious, I will have you accompany the angel. So Lucifer synonymous with Iblis, Iblis. same thing. Which later became Satan, Shaitan in Arabic. And that's translated in English as devil. The, the devil. He became the devil. But initially he was a righteous guy, the righteous of his race. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him, he developed arrogance and pride or what we call self-admiration and the special one. And that is why he envied Adam when Allah created Adam and commanded the angels to bow down to Adam. That's when he revealed his pride and arrogance. And that is why he was taken down, sent down again. But here's the interesting piece which has to do with the Tucker was talking about, the water, that when the jinn started shedding blood and killing one another and causing a lot of corruption on earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels led by Iblis and they expelled them to the sea. Wow. Iblis, after he went astray, you see, he was in the company of the angels when Allah commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam as a sign that they will be servant of Adam. So the angels prostrated except Iblis. And Allah asked him why. Then he revealed his, you know, that I'm the special one. I shouldn't be bowing down yeah. to this. I thought, I am the man here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I'm better than this new creation. So Allah sent him down and then he begged for the respite. Can you let me live until the day of judgment? Now he decided to exploit this time in misguiding Adam and his offspring. Now, he will use that army of the jinn that he expelled to the water in order to misguide Adam and in order to insinuate to Adam and his offspring. Here is the interesting piece that every single day, Satan now, which is the devil, he has a throne that he sets on water. Now his throne is on the water. On the water because they, most of the jinn are living there to begin with. And what they're talking about is the water. This yeah. is All this stuff's happening on the hadith. water. Look at the hadith. Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu Shaitan places his throne on water every single day. The jinn now who are about to go and do their work, misguide human, he will give them the incentive. Whoever does the best job in misguiding Muslims today, I will give you a hug today or another wording i will give you a crown a prize i'll crown you i'll he'll reward he rewards you i'll reward when you mentioned the ton of evidence that they are under the ocean is the first fight now to by the angels to drive them out into the ocean yeah that happened then yeah that's you, you and went, that's where they live let's get into another clip here with sure. joe rogan and carl tuckerson the deeper level is if they're spiritual beings which i believe they are it's a binary they're either you know you're on team good or team bad you can assign any name to it you want but like what are these things are they good or bad and i think some of them are bad if the u.s government knows that or elements the people within the u.s government know that then you know then they're serving a bad force jinn is the force that is driving our world right now but the embodiment in a human form those are the people who are running the world now what's your relationship with these things what is the u.s government's relationship with these things and there's evidence that there is a relationship and that it's a long-standing and that raises like a lot of questions about intent and people have been hurt by these things you know that's a fact it's a knowable fact it's a provable fact and killed i'm not saying millions of people have been killed by whatever these things are but people have been killed and it's known because it's working its way through the courts out of the va so i don't know an object that is by definition supernatural it's above the laws of nature as we understand them and that has resulted in the deaths of people we don't spend enough time thinking about like what that adds up to like actually not good the template that you're using to understand this is like science fiction, right? These are an advanced race of beings from somewhere else. But the template that every other society before us has used is a spiritual one. There is a whole world that we can't see that acts on people, a supernatural world that's acting on us all the time for good and bad. Every society has thought this before ours. Every society in all recorded history has thought that until, I'll be specific, August 1945 when we dropped the atom bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And all of a sudden the West is just officially secular. We're God. There is no God but us. And that's the world that we have grown up in but that's an anomaly. Like no one else has ever thought that. There's never been a society that thought that. Every other society has assumed and they've had all kinds of different explanations and the details differ, but the core idea does not differ. It never has differed from caves until now that we're being acted on by spiritual forces at all times. And so to someone born before or living before 1945, I think it would have been much more obvious that this is the thing that every society has written about. In fact, that battle, that unseen battle around us, that spiritual battle, has like been the basis of every society, of every religion, not just Christianity. So like it just, once you discard your very, very recent assumptions, relatively speaking, about how the world works, you're like, well, that kind of seems like the obvious explanation, right? There's a 
huge amount, a massive corpus of evidence that they're seen by people in our atmosphere, on Earth looking up, or in a submarine looking out. And what is that? The more he's talking about this, where he says this is a, a whole world we don't see acting on us for good and bad. Innahu yarakum, innahu he sees you in reference to their head, Satan. Him and his host and his helpers, why you don't see them? This is God Almighty Allah saying in the Quran. That. So he sees you, you don't see him. You don't see them. That's actually their strength. Their strength that you're fighting an enemy that you do not physically see. And they have so much influence on you that they can influence your mind, your thought what we call wiswas, insinuation. He can actually force you to think in a certain way and think of doing crazy things. Would that equal what we see nightly news, where you see something unimaginable, a mother decapitates her child. Or drowning their kids. kids and or... she believes she's doing the right thing. Where that thought would come from, but from insinuation of shaitan. He's jinn that he's talking yes, about. Yes, yes. They make you think in a certain way. He, he talks about this is an unseen battle. Defeating them is so easy, but your only source is Allah. When you're possessed by a jinni, or when you have the influence of the jinn on you, the only one can help you is Allah. And the means to do that is Adhkar is Salah is to go back and perfect your monotheism. I was invited at yes. one time, I remember this 14 years ago, to speak in a university in Colorado. And the subject was the aliens. I told mm -hmm. them, listen, there is no such a thing. Those are the jinn. There are no such thing as aliens. Those are the jinn. Those are the jinn. The jinn, they have enough force to do stuff like Tucker is describing. You know, they run so fast up to the heaven. They are so quick. They also, here is the interesting piece, they also can manifest themselves in a physical form. Through that physical form, they can actually do things. And by the way, we have an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that one night the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praying tahajjud. The jinni manifested himself in a way and started distracting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He started distracting him, taking his attention away from Salat al-Tahajjud. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam caught him. And this is the thing, if a jinni embody himself in a physical form and you catch him in that form, you can subjugate him to you. If you catch him in this form. You can do whatever you want to do with him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam quote the jinni. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the extent that I could feel the witness of his tongue in my hand. Obviously you quote him from the tongue. And look at this beautiful piece. He said, I was about to bring him in the morning to the masjid and tie him in one of the pillars of his masjid so the kids in Medina can have a good time with him. Yes. Play with him, mess around with him. Has it been for me remembering the supplication of my brother Sulaiman. What is the supplication of Sulaiman? Prophet Sulaiman. Sorry. Prophet Sulaiman. What was his supplication? One of the things that Sulaiman requested, O oh Allah, bestow upon me kinship, power that no other human until the day of judgment is entitled to. So Allah gave him the subjugation of the jinn. One of his elements of kinship that the jinn are going to be serving you without having to compromise your faith. Because there is a notion out there that people can deal with jinn without compromising their Islam, their Tawheed, their monotheism. You're dreaming. No jinn will be able to help you or supply you with information that can help your business, your market, unless you disbelieve in Allah. Unless you disbelieve in Allah. Not just in words, in action. in action. The scholars, they said, the force of the jinn is unseen to you. So in turn, to protect yourself from the unseen force, you must call in another unseen force to deal with the unseen force. So who is the unseen force? Allah, the creator. Allah. And he may send an angel who is unseen to you as well.